Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. I'm here with Mike Mandarino. Mike, good to see you. Good to see you, Lou. We're gonna have another fantastic car and a fantastic day. We're out here in the western suburbs of Chicago. And Mike, tell us what we're gonna see today. This is one of your cars that you've had since 1984. What That's do we have? correct. Yeah, 1982 Excalibur Phaeton. And the Excalibur in the 80s was? The car of the stars, they referred to it as. Some of the, go ahead. Most celebrities had, uh, a lot of these cars in the 80s and uh, it was uh, in great demand for a lot of the movies and um, so on and so forth throughout the, the 80s. So posters was, of this car, the whole nine posters, yards. Posters, Matt so, Houston show, uh, Dallas. Uh, some of Dallas. the stars just off, off the top of our head. Lee Horsley and um, Dean Schwar Martin, Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger. Yeah, we were just looking at a list. It's, Phyllis uh, Diller. Steve McQueen. There have been a few people who like this car. Burt I'll Lancaster. Burt yeah. Lancaster. I'll grab the cameras I usually do. Mike, come on alongside with me. Let's sure. take no further ado and let's see the car of the 80s. Now, there's all kinds of thoughts about the Excalibur. You're going to kind of clear some of that up for us. Give us just a little bit of Excalibur history, too, as I feature sure. your car. This is an 82. What was the first year that the Excalibur came out? They actually started in 1963. Um, it was uh, designed by Brooke Stevens, and it was uh, he was commissioned by the Studebaker to have a car for the auto show. And um, at that time, um, Studebaker pulled from the United States, and so Brooke Stevens was left with a, a car for an auto show. So he ends up uh, going ahead and um, with the auto show, and the car was popular. Ended up with uh, I believe it was eight or nine orders ended up for, forming the Excalibur Corporation. A lot of people, even back in the 80s, thought this was kind of a kit car and it had a Volkswagen frame to it, but none of that's None accurate. of that is true, no. There was a lot of cars that, that had copied the Excalibur actually afterwards, uh, Zimmer and uh, Johnson and stuff like that, but Excalibur, uh, they built all their own frame. This is uh, their own frame. Um, probably a little hard to, to get a picture of, but it, it's a solid frame underneath. Uh, they built all their compo uh, components. They do use, the earlier ones were Studebaker uh, powered, and then uh, after that they went to General Motors. So they used some General Motors components, including the engine and drivetrain. And the, uh, the, you know, the Excalibur, of course, you know, these are actually Volkswagen. Volkswagen, yeah, yeah. Which is kind of interesting. Now, where was the car made out of? Was it Wisconsin? Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Milwaukee, correct. Wisconsin. Right. Look at that. In 82, Excalibur, that, uh, Excalibur was uh, about $65,000 new. And so the it was, figures it was, they it was an expensive was car. Materials alone to build one of these cars because uh, steel, stainless, and aluminum, it was about $32,000 in materials alone. Wow. So this car, heavy, expensive. There's a venting there. And you were sharing with me that front center light, almost like a tucker, would would swivel at times. Correct. Not, not the on earlier this ones one. did did uh, move with the. Uh, there's actually a with the steering. There's a red bar down there for that. That you could see it's still there, and you can see the the venting here, where that vent comes out that I showed you. Does it have a unique horn? Is is that effective? With that, are those air horns? Those actually are work? air horns. Yeah. Let's uh, let's let's beep we those. We can start it up. Well, Maybe when we, when we, we tour start it around, when we, we start, start it up, up, yeah. Look at the beautiful wood. Like you make sure nobody touches that though, do you? When they right. get in the car, <laughs> right? It's like wood you don't touch. Got it. Now there were some Volkswagen kit cars that were Excaliburs, but they weren't actual Excaliburs. I can remember that too. That's correct. That right. people who tried to put their Volkswagen together and make it an Excalibur, but this is an actual I think they Excalibur. even sold a kit that was called a Gazelle, I, I believe, at that time that you could convert a Volkswagen to. And, and with that being said, I mean, the uh, the actual Excalibur, the one we're talking about here, the kind of car, the stars, and Only this is obviously- 3,000 made. That's the uh, fuel tank. Does that open? Uh, Opening, yeah. Okay. Only 3,000 made. About 3,000 were produced, right. So this window actually goes up. Yes, all these do. It has a hard top inside, and then there's also a built-in power convertible here. Really? Yes. A power convertible. Power convertible. The they call it power convertible, but it's more like power assist. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Okay, so power, and then you kind of help you it out a little bit. You have to help it along, correct. GE lights. Look at the beautiful 
from the side the beautiful angle of that windshield. And uh, let's let's open her up. Let me get that door panel right there. Sure. This kind of tells you that you've got a real. Let me get let you grab that key. I think there's a key in the ignition or something. It sounds like it's making a noise there. There's the detail about the Excalibur Automobile Corporation. And then when you get in, you've got the sword emblem there. Leather seats. Yes. High backs, very high backs. And quite a bit of room in the back. And you've had some people back here. This car's been in a few shows. If you uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it's. Um... <clears throat> It was um, invited up to op uh, the opening of the Milwaukee Summerfest and the Milwaukee 200. Uh, also, um, uh, one of the Bush races uh, with uh, David Green was a point champion way back, and uh, he paraded in the car as well. Uh, Jimmy Pearsall, uh, just to name a few of the people that have been in the car for, for different parades. So it's kind of a parade vehicle as well. That's a wood grain steering, wood grain dash. So yeah, they said that's uh, Zebrano wood. In the gauging, there's the air horn on and off. I'm guessing you don't keep it on very long. No. So the, the horn is here, not here. There's a regular horn in this position, and then there's the air horns that are the air that horns you when, seen up front. When you really want to hear it. The right. Sony is aftermarket or? or the Sony is an aftermarket. Okay. The original was a Blap Hunt, which I've kept, but okay. um, we've added the uh, Sony because it does have a CD player. The original okay. came with a cassette. And the uh, specifically made right for Mike. Beautiful. And I like the doors. I want to get it this way because the sun's kind of hitting a little bit. Where you see the wood grain and a grab handle. And a nice little light there. Let's look under the hood while well, we've uh, got a chance before we start it. Let's start with the uh, far side, just because the sun's hitting that. Beautiful. I'm noticing Excalibur under there. What are the... Uh, up on top, these are the regular horns. Oh, regular horns. Okay, these right. are horns. And the Excalibur air cleaner, no missing that. And it's a V8, you said. So it's these a V8. Are, these are the original ornamental. Was a, the, these are ornamental, except for the uh, series before this, they were functional. Okay. Um, this one does have one of the NVR motors, which was destined for Europe. Tell me what NVR means. Uh, NVR was the name of a company in... Uh, in Wisconsin mm -hmm. for uh, they built high performance engines and Milwaukee was exporting some automobiles to Europe at that time and they built 12 specially built motors to go to Europe yeah because they were shipping 12 cars at that time the speedos are a little bit different uh, normal uh, series uh, 4 would have a 305 this is a 350 but it's a built 350 it's putting out about 409 horse and Mike we're gonna have a little fun now because I know a little bit of the story of this car. This car did not have that engine originally, and you weren't happy. Right. Uh, <laughs> Why not? Well, the story is, you know, when I was about uh, 17 years old. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Um, I pulled up to a light in uh, a town called Oak Brook, and alongside of me pulled up a beautiful Corvette one day. And um, I'm ooing and eyeing with my... Uh, girlfriend and next thing I who know later becomes your wife who later becomes my wife okay. correct and on the other side pulled up an Excalibur Here we and go. that was the first time I've ever seen one and the light changed and both those cars sped off into the sunset <laughs> and I looked and I go man that was beautiful and awesome yeah uh, someday I'd like to own uh, one of those and you own uh, one, one of, of each of them yes correct, correct. exactly so let's so go. when I purchased the car um, it had the 305 so I was a little disappointed in the performance of it so uh, Excalibur was still in production at that time and contacted them and asked them was there anything I could do I was the new owner and they said certainly so um, they invited me up, uh, very gracious people, awesome to work with. Yeah. Um, and they explained they had 12 of these engines. They, I think they had already had sold six of the cars and they had one of the engines still there. 
and asked if I was interested in having uh, the European engine put in, and that was like a no-brainer for me. It's yeah. like definitely put it in. So uh, it really just woke the car up. I think we're going to go for a little test drive, and yeah, we'll, we'll uh, have you a can, second you video can hear with the and test feel drive. that. Sure. Let's let me take a look at the other side of the engine. The other side of the engine, just so people get a full feel of that. There's the brakes. They really designed this well under here. I mean, it looks clean. You know, I mean, I mean, granted, you've you've kept it clean, but I mean, you've got uh, hooker competition headers. I mean, this is this, so it's an Excalibur with a real Excalibur engine and and uh, an upgrade to that. Straight what is really factory. nice how they designed is these uh, Zerk fittings yeah these side panels literally just come up and out of here so it has great access to to work the complete on the vehicle. engine yeah to get the complete engine right. now if lou if you can get down there to see the size of that frame too it's just incredible oh yeah the boxed frame there it is the car weighs 5800 pounds yeah you can see the 5800 pounds 5, almost pounds. three real, tons real rear spares there so almost three tons there. Is there anything I've missed? I see the fuse connection and here's where the fuses are capped. Right. I've got the Excalibur there. It's actually a, a decal and uh, yours is a concourse winner. Yeah, this one, this is uh, one at Geneva concourse through the Mercedes Club at uh, Cuneo. Let's, let's shut, let's shut the, uh, the hood and we'll have you stand right next to it, Mike. And then we'll do another quick video with a ride in it just so people can kind of get the feel of that. Mike, Thank you for looking. Yeah, Mike, stay right there with us. It's always a treat to, to hang out with you, and you've got some great cars, and we're going to do some more of those as well. But thanks for bringing the Excalibur out. I've been looking forward to uh, doing an Excalibur. It's our first Excalibur on my car story. So thanks so much, Mike, for letting Thank us you. do your car.